let's do it. Welcome to CRAP. It is Monday, November 15th, and today we have a really good speaker, our very own Bob Gross. Um, tell you a little bit about him. And by the way, I'm not Donald. Donald is in Phoenix with his brother and a friend enjoying the desert and getting, I'm sure, lots of great photography in. So today you got me and you've got my co-host, Lou Mello. Uh, our speaker today is District Governor-elect Bob Gross. Bob was raised in Rock Hill, South Carolina. He moved to Beaufort in 1987, where he has been since then. He is married to Kathy for 52 years, two sons, two grandsons. He is a graduate of the University of South Carolina with a BS and an ME degree in chemical engineering. And he's registered in South Carolina, North Carolina and Georgia as a professional engineer. He joined Rotary in 1995 and has attended seven countries, uh, clubs in seven countries, maybe more now, I'm not sure. He has attended six international conventions. He is a graduate of Rotary Leadership Institute, one, two, and three. And he is our district governor elect. So Bob, you're going to talk to us today about your trip to Istanbul and Egypt. This was a program we had on CRAP about a year and a half ago. And Bob took such an interest in it, he decided to go ahead and do it. So I'm turning it over to you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. As you said, th this started about about a year and a half ago on a CRAP call where you had a gentleman. Um, you had a um, uh, Ahmed Elzabi to talk about the Cross Egypt Challenge. And he was from the Alexandria Rotary Club, Alexandria, Egypt, that is, the Cosmopolitan Club. And I was just fascinated by it because Egypt has always been on my bucket list. But I told him that, well, these people ride motorcycles and motor scooters across Egypt for about 10 days. And I said, you know, I'd love to do it, but I don't do motorcycles. And he said, well, we do have a, an air conditioned service van. So I said, count me in. Well, if if you look at it, uh, going there, you really, you almost have to go through Istanbul and you got to spend a little time before and a little time after. So that's what this whole trip is about. I've got about 400 pictures. There's no way to show them all. So this is going to be a whirlwind tour. This is about three things. It's about, of course, the, the Cross Egypt Challenge. And, and, and I'll tell you about that. Um, it's also about uh, seeing the the, the wonderful, amazing part of Egypt and Istanbul, some of the most historic places in, in the world. And it's also about meeting and visiting with Rotarians. And that's a very, very important part of this. So let me start. Uh, the Cross Egypt Challenge is, it's, it's promoted by the, um, the uh, it's co-sponsored by the Cosmopolitan Club of uh, Alexandria, Egypt. It's a, it's a Federique, it's part of FIM, and, and that's a big deal because there are these uh, tours all across the world every, every year. This one started in 2011. Uh, the, the ride this year was over 1,300 miles. Just to, just to give you a map real quick, uh, this is Egypt, obviously, Alexandria. The, 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 the ride started in Alexandria, went to outside Cairo, came all the way down to... Um, uh, Luxor, went over to the Red Sea, stayed two or three nights over there, and came back to Cairo. But to get there, I flew into Amsterdam up here, changed planes, went to Istanbul, spent about three or four days there, then came down to Alexandria for a couple of days, did the ride, and then spent four days in, in Cairo. And we'll talk about that. When I got to Alexandria, I was met at the hotel by these three gentlemen. Gentleman on the left is so at Bason, he is the district governor of elect in 2420. And, and I forget, one is Suleiman, and I forget his last name. He's a PDG, and the other gentleman is a very active Rotarian. But they met me at, at the hotel. I stayed at the Hilton Bosphorus. We had Turkish coffee, which will wake you up. And, and he said, tomorrow we're going we're gonna to see Istanbul. But that night, I took my first picture. And this is a picture of the Bosphorus Strait at night. Amazing picture. That's the hippodrome in, in the middle where they play soccer right there. 
and that is the Bosphorus, one of the most famous water bodies in the world. We, the, the next day we were, uh, we, we, we saw several parts of, uh, of Istanbul. The Blue Mosque was, was actually closed for, for repairs, but that is the Blue Mosque. We did get to see another mosque and uh, to, the mosques are extraordinarily beautiful very symmetrical, a lot of artwork. Um, they are something to behold. If, if you have, not, have never been inside a mosque, they are very, very beautiful. Um, we took a cruise on the Bosphorus, and these are just a few of the little homes that you might see on the Bosphorus Strait in the multi, multi, multi-million dollar range. Um, some of these were former palaces. Some are uh, extraordinary hotels. One is a hotel where I think, um, let's see, $20,000 a night is what they told me. So here are a few very nice little uh, bungalows that you might see on the Bosphorus. They're owned uh, largely by, by Europeans. We went to the, high, to the Hagia Sophia Grand Mosque. And, be, and before I show you pictures, you need to understand that it was built in the year 537 by Justinian the first. It was the largest Christian church for a thousand years. It was converted to a mosque in 1453 after the fall to the Ottomans, and a lot of the relics and things were destroyed and removed. It was converted to a museum in 1935 and converted back to a mosque last year. In 2015-20, it was the most, most visited tourist attraction in Istanbul. And this is the Hagia Sophia Grand Mosque. It is an amazing building. Um, if you had time to really get in there and look, you could you could see some of the Christian uh, artwork that is there, but it's very hard to see. But it is an immense building, and they close it when it when it's time for prayer. They close it, and you leave, and they pray. But it is one of the most famous sites in all of, of Istanbul. If you're if you're there, you have to go to the Spice Bazaar, and you have to go to the, you have to go to the Grand Bazaar, and I brought back a whole bunch of Turkish delights and spices and saffrons and all kind of stuff. Fascinating place. Not many. I've always been fascinated by by Oriental rugs. This is a picture of the Pezrek rug. It's the oldest known rug in the world. It dates back twenty five hundred years to the Scythians. It was preserved in the mountains of of uh, Kazakhstan in ice and they finally found it. Um, it's got images of deer and a whole bunch of other things. Like I said, I've always been fascinated by Turkish rugs. So we, we went to a place where they actually make rugs. And the one on the left is a very, very good replica of that rug. The one on the right is a, a beautiful uh, Turkish uh, silk rug that will probably be seen in Beaufort before long. Um, this was lunch on lunch on the Bosphorus. Let me see if I can get that with, without messing it up. Yeah, this was lunch on the Bosphorus with with a bunch of Rotarians. Oops. As, as, we, as I was leaving Istanbul to go to Cairo, I, I caught a picture of something that most people will, will, will never see. This was at the, the, the Istanbul airport. And if you are a plane nut like I am, you'll recognize this as the Antonov An-225 Mrina. It's the largest airplane in the world. It's the only one like it. Uh, there is no other one like it. It's a, it is a Russian plane and for a plane geek and for for plane geeks, that is just a great sight. When you fly into Cairo, it's like um, like a lot of other large cities, like Beijing and big cities, very, 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 very crowded. I flew into Cairo, and our, our, our tour guide met me, and, and we went to um, Alexandria, which is where everything started. Well, as we're driving to Alexandria, I looked off to the left, and I thought, well, wait a minute, those are pyramids. And sure enough, you, you, go, you go right through Giza. And, uh, and we'll come back to that. This is the, uh, I, I stayed at the Hotel Steigenberger, Cecil Steigenberger. 
built in 1922. Ah, excuse me a second. Oh, I'm dropping everything. Um, built in 1922, it, it has been updated and is a first class hotel. But this was the elevator at the ho at the Hotel Steigenberger. I've never seen I've seen these on TV in the in the Agatha Christie movies, but never never ridden in one. But this is how this is was the hotel op the hotel elevator. Beautiful old hotel, very very well restored, updated, very very modern with a very working antique elevator. You don't see those very often. You ain't gonna see that at the Hilton or the Marriott, that's for sure. All right. This is the city of, of this is a view from the window. Uh, um, this is a view from my room at the city of, of Alexandria, Egypt. This, uh, established in about 300, 330 BC by Alexander the Great. This is early in the morning. Traffic's easy. At night, it's a zoo, an absolute zoo. People sit outside the hotels all along the street all night and drink coffee and just watch people go by. That building out there to the left, out there, I think is where it is, is the... Um, Citadel, and we'll talk about that in a second. This is my tour guide, a lovely lady, and very knowledgeable. All right, on the left is a picture of what they think was the old Alexandria Lighthouse. In in a ma major earthquake many years many years ago, it tumbled into the into the sea. They pulled up some of the building, some some of the blocks, and built this citadel. So this citadel uh, is, sits on the site of where the original Alexandria Lighthouse was, and actually has some of those original blocks in its base. Uh, in Alexandria, there are catacombs dating back to pre-Roman pre times. Uh, we went to a place called Pompey's Pillar. And, and on the left, you can see all that's left, basically, is there's one large pillar and a couple of other smaller pillars. This was a huge temple. But to give you an idea of just how tall it is, that's me standing, standing in, in, in front of this. And again, that all that got leveled in one of the earthquakes over the years. We went to a place called uh, the Kam El Dika. It goes back to the uh, first or second century uh, BC. Um, and it's a, it's a, it is a Roman ruin. And there were, um, there was actually a school, a, a Roman school there. But that's a Roman ruin right, right in the middle of Alexandria. Went to the Alexandria Egypt Rotary Club and, um, did, and, and that was a wonderful club. Uh, hosted by them, we had a great lunch. Uh, Ahmad Sada, a, a RI international trainer, uh, was the host. And we're swapping banners there. Now we start the Cross Egypt Challenge. And this again, show you what, where we started from and where we're going. We started in Alexandria, came down outside of Cairo, came down to Minya, then, then came down to Luxor, which is down here. Went over here to the Red Sea, spent two or three nights and came back to Cairo. This is, this is the beginning of the uh, ride. This lady is from, she's a Rotarian from Washington State. She may be on the call. I hope she is. Uh, she, she and her husband are in two different Rotary Clubs. Their daughter married a gentleman who now works for Boeing in Charleston. So they're going to come see him in December. And hopefully we'll have a chance to connect and say hello then. This is this is the beginning of the ride. There were about 20 motor scooters and 20 motorcycles on the ride. This was fairly early morning on a Saturday. And this is um, all these bikes and scooters were marked with the Cross Egypt Challenge and, and rotary symbols. 
uh, halfway through the ride. Oh, the uh, scooters had had to be re refueled every two hours. The the motorcycles about every four. So when we stopped one time, there was this little roadside stand where this guy. Oops, go back to back. Where this guy was um, preparing food. Well, I'm not going to pass up that opportunity. So we had a, a sampling of I don't know what this stuff was, but it sure was good. Until our host came over and said, "No, no, don't don't eat this. COVID, COVID. It was too late. It was gone." Um, these are some pictures from the bikers riding on the left in the desert, and on the right um, going through a city, all giving the right hand turn signal. We were escorted by police um, going into and out of each city. Uh, I was riding in this van with three lovely spouses one from uh, Mexico, one from uh, France, and Debbie from Washington State. Saw a lot of desert, a lot of desert, a lot of desert. But all of a sudden, as we're riding through the desert, here would be a lot of agriculture. They grow tons and tons of corn and sugar cane and, and pomegranates and tomatoes and, and, and date palms and vegetables and vegetables and vegetables. You can barely see here on the right how they're able to do it. That is, when you get close to, a, to one of the cities, this is getting close to Minya, there was a large canal coming in from the Nile, from the Nile and, that's, and that's, where, that's how they're able to, to, to grow all these um, crops. This is, a, this is entering the city of Minya, and I call it a taxi, but that's everybody just catching a ride. We're crossing the Nile in, in Minya, Every now and again, we would find some food. This is uh, Egyptian coffee on the left. It has a consistency of uh, Hershey's syrup, and it'll keep you awake for, for a few hours. And I saw that package of Carolina Ros raspberry cake, so I thought that was unique. Have you, ever had have you ever had bird tongue soup? Have you ever heard of bird tongue soup? Well, I'm gonna tell you, it was delicious. Now, just so you know, it's not really bird tongue. All those little pieces are actually orzo, but um, it looks like bird tongue. That's why they called it that. Okay. Um, security was there. Um, they, they actually changed the uh, trip uh, once or twice to, uh, to go. Uh, we, we, we didn't go to some places that they had originally planned. We went to others that they hadn't planned to. There were a couple of places that, that they said it's best to avoid. When, when going through a uh, city, there were many security checks. This gentleman um, was there with, with his weapon. And um, plus there was a gentleman in our van wearing a suit and a big Uzi or something like that. So it was safe. It was very safe. One of the highlights of the trip was uh, getting in was, was Luxor. We had two nights and one day. Luxor is the home of the Luxor Temple. And this is the beginning of that. This is the Avenue of the Sphinxes. They, I think there were a couple of hundred of them. Not supposed to photograph it, but I did anyway. The Luxor Temple, we had about two hours here. You can spend two weeks, easily two weeks. So I'm not doing it anywhere near the justice that, that it deserves. The Luxor Temple is massive. How they built these things and uh, is, is just incredible. Um, in Luxor, the temples, for the most part, are on the east side of the Nile. The, uh, the, the, the tombs are on the west, and that's because the sun comes up in the east and brings life with it, and that's where life is. The sun sets in the west, and things get dark, and the sun goes to the afterlife, and that's the death part. So this is on the east. This is, this is Luxor, the Luxor Temple. And what you really can't see is, is on these walls, all these engravings. Every little thing has a story. Every little mark means something. So it's not just nice pictures. They're very, very storytelling. Oh, this is the uh, video of the Luxor Temple. Just gigantic. The, the next morning, we, we took a hot air balloon ride, 
And I thought, you know, I'm not so sure that I want to do this, but we did it anyway. And they have a picture of me over here calling my wife to be sure that that my that my life insurance policy was current. It was. So we went and here's the flame. And, you know, once it starts, there there ain't no stopping, ain't no bailing out. So you're so you're going. And right at the end of this, you'll you'll hear the there it is. There you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This gentleman over here on the left, he is from Poland. He and his sister were there with their father, who is a Rotarian from Poland. This gentleman is a Rotarian from Toronto. I can't make out the rest of my thing. He is from Egypt. Um, there were Rotarians there from seven countries. And I'll show you some pictures. In, in just a minute. In the afternoon, we went to the Valley of the Kings. Oh, Luxor then, this is less than a month ago. Luxor was 106 degrees. Today, Luxor will be in the low to mid nineties. If you're gonna go to Luxor, you really need to go in December or January because it's pretty hot. This is a, 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 a picture of the Valley of the Kings. When a Pharaoh became Pharaoh, they started building his tomb or his pyramid, whichever. So if, if, if a pharaoh or king was on the throne for a short time, he didn't have much of a tomb. If he was on the throne for a long time, then they, then they spent a lot of time building it, and, and he had them, had a, had a very nice tomb. But these are all, all the different tombs in the Valley of the Kings, and they, they never kept any maps. So a new pharaoh would start building or ha have his people start building a new tomb, and they would often run into... Uh, one that was already there because they didn't know they didn't know where they were. This is a typical drawing of of how they built the tomb. They told us that there were two uh, that the two best ones to see were Ramses the third and Seti the first. And so this is these this is these are pictures from Ramses the third. And what when when they made this, they would they would etch away all this background stuff and leave the highlighted stuff and then paint it. And this is today the way it was. I don't know two three thousand years ago. Just amazing. This is this is one of the walls. And again, each of these pictures is telling a story. They they all mean something. The, the boat is transporting the, the pharaoh to the afterlife, and he's carrying with him all, all the things that he needs, et cetera, et cetera. So you can spend hours and hours and hours standing right there examining just, just that picture. This is, a, this is going down to Seti the first tomb, which they said is, is the most ornate. Um, these are pretty steep steps. This is from the uh, tomb of Seti the first. The, this is Debbie from Washington State and me. We were in, in the tomb. The guard led us into a place where he said we not supposed to go, but he let us in anyway. Just incredible ornate craftsmanship. You just have to see it to believe. It. Right here, you can see how this is actually, this isn't raised. Everything else has been, has been carved away from it. And then they paint it. Just amazing. We went to Hapshiput's Hap, Hap temple, which is a little unusual because it 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 is on the um, on the west side. This is one of the few temples that that that's on the west. And she was a queen, or uh, it it's a long story. She was um, stepmother or whatever, but uh, massive temple. This that night we went down to. Um, to the bazaar. This is Wojciech from Poland, and we rode a horse and buggy. If you like cigarettes, you can buy some of Cleopatra's lights. As we're getting ready to leave, I took a, this is the view from my room. This is the Nile River. It's going left to right, south to north. It's just being, being a water person, I was just highly impressed. 
by the Nile, but it's just an, an incredible river. It's formed by the Blue Nile and the White Nile, one starting in Lake Victoria, or actually just above Lake Victoria, and the other starting in Ethiopia, I believe. And Ethiopia is building a, or has built a dam, causing a lot of controversy by taking water from the Nile. So real big issues there. All right, then we went over to the Red Sea. Um, you wouldn't see this at Myrtle Beach too much, um, but this is, there were, there were a few camels. We went to the ancient city of Kaser, El Kaysar. It's a 5,000 year old city. You could scuba dive. Um, we went into a mosque on the sorry, left. Could you please Let me turn my phone off, I'm sorry. Uh, we went into a mosque on the left and a Christian church on the right. There's a fort there that had uh, guarded that city for years and years. And um, the Coast Guard, the Egyptian Coast Guard ran it for until 19, I don't know, 75 or so. We went snorkeling. And this is some of the views from the glass bottom boat. Oh, we stayed at the Sheraton Soma Bay and Sheraton was, was a co-sponsor of this, of this ride. And they really put on the dog horse. They, they had a wonderful dinner, wonderful dinner, some nice entertainment. Anyway, nice entertainment. Then we got back on the road and what you can't see too well here are thousands and thousands and thousands of, of windmills. There were, I don't know, it had to be 10,000 of them on the left. And on the right is the Red Sea uh, heading toward the Suez Canal. Uh, a friend of mine worked over there many, many years ago for Exxon International, and they used to fly and, and, and land on these um, oil rigs. And so there's a lot of oil rigs. The last morning there, this is a beautiful sunrise. And this is one of the oil complexes. In this particular area, a lot of industry, mostly oil oriented. Um, this truck on the left, I thought was, was pretty unusual. I've never seen a tanker truck uh, decorated and painted like that. This is on the right is one of our scooters. Gentleman on the left is John Cram. He's a he's a he, he's a past district governor from Gettysburg, uh, Pennsylvania. The group on the right is um, we had a Rotary Club meeting in the at the edge of the Sinai Desert. This lady is I think she's from France. This lady is from uh, Bainbridge, Washington, Bainbridge Island, Washington. Me. The, this couple is from, this is Debbie and her husband from Washington State, John. Um, uh, where is, uh, he's from Canada, uh, Poland, Slovenia, Romania, and Canada. So we had a rather unusual Rotary Club meeting um, at the edge of the Sinai Desert. And John led us in the four-way test. And this is the end of the ride. These are Rotarians, non-Rotarians, helpers, truck loaders, mechanics, everybody. This, it was an extraordinarily safe, well-organized, well-developed. Uh, I would go again in a heartbeat. I don't think I'll go next year, but, but you never know. Um, they, I'm, I'm wearing one of the shirts, and uh, some people wore shirts from the... from. From, from years gone by, and that was the end of the ride. Well, I wasn't gonna go home, so I, uh, I decided to take a tour, and I went, this is the, the original Egyptian museum opened in 1901, and this is a, and I'll, I'll show you just some of the things inside. This is a, 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 a statue of a, a lady um, making beer, and I'll tell you about beer in just a second. And they said that these things just, just pop up out of the ground all the time, all the time. This is some, oh, I'm sorry, famous person. And if you look over here, this is the heart and the various organs. This is on the side of the, of the uh, seat. Uh, it, it depicts the heart pumping to, to everything and giving life. 
this statue doesn't look real exciting, but it's very it's very well known, mainly because that's it, like two or three thousand, three four thousand years old. They they put in a glass eye, and think about putting in a glass eye. But back in those days, um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna breeze through this because there's so much stuff. Um, this is from about 25, 2600 BC, uh, monuments of Hetep and Heres. This shows the sun god giving, giving light and power to the Pharaoh and his family. Same thing with the uh, sun god over here. Lots of jewelry, tons and tons and tons of jewelry. When they mummified somebody, they took out the lungs, liver, stomach, and intestines, and they put them, in, put them into one of four Coptic jars. And these are the these are, are typical Coptic jars, and these are the uh, I guess they're gods. I don't know that that would guard the organs until the mummy reached the afterlife, in which case they were all reunited. Um, this these they, they found a tomb of Yuna and Thuya, and this is and the one on the left is is the coffin, and this is the brace that they use to keep the body straight during mummification and afterwards. And that's his um, actual chariot. And this is the uh, his actual throne. And, and now they had an area dedicated to Tutankhamun and this is his actual chair. And this this was at the, the base of it. And I was struck yesterday in church, there was a passage that said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool at your feet. Well, that's exactly what this is. This is a footstool showing his, his enemies. So this footstool here sits right at, right at the end. So he sat in the, in, in, on his throne with his feet on his enemies. That's the symbolism. Those are his Coptic um, jars. And this is an ostrich fan that Tutankhamun actually used when he was alive that all this was found in his tomb. Then we went over to Giza, to the Giza Plateau. And, and the picture on the left is, 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 is from a book and shows what it was like back in those days. The, the, the Nile River actually flowed right in front of the, of the, um, of the pyramids. And, and, and they think that's how they got the, all the blocks there, how they got them off, off the boats up to, up to the pyramids and everything, nobody knows. But these buildings right here are where they would actually mummify the, the pharaoh. Then they would have a procession up to the pyramid. Each building was, was used one time. They built this massive building and they built a massive pyramid and they were used one time for one pharaoh only. Um, they spent so much money doing this that it almost bankrupted the, the, the uh, country and after the, the fourth dynasty, the people said, enough, we can't afford this. You are you're bankrupting us. On the right is a picture of the Sphinx, the Great Pyramid, and that uh, building used to mummify people. This is the, this is the, uh, the Great Pyramid. And it, it, it's hard to put it in perspective how big it is, but that's me standing, standing in front of one block. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. How they did it, nobody knows. All right, this is the Great Sphinx, the uh, the Great Pyramid, the Sphinx, and the and, and the building off to the side is where they would um, mummify the uh, pharaohs. And I'll show you a picture of that for for a reason. There's the big Sphinx. This is a, another picture of the pyramid. This is that building where they would mummify the pharaoh. This is red granite. This is not sandstone. This is not limestone. It is per it's hard as it's, I mean, it, it's granite. It's perfectly smooth, extraordinarily well put together. No joint on top of joint. So this thing will be there forever and ever and ever. Just incredible construction methods. Um, Monday night, I went to a, to a uh, meeting of the El Tahir Rotary Club. The speaker was a lady who had written a book on human trafficking in the Middle East, and she's one of these, and one of these is also a, the uh, the club president. Um, 
Um, this this lady in the pink jacket is Sally Sally El Haddad. Uh, and she is a uh, she's a uh, she's a member of the Cairo Rotary, Rotary Club, and she was my my host. She's a an Egyptian senator, so when she so she can get anywhere that she wants to go. Um, that's me. And this gentleman here is with the U.S. Embassy. He was invited to come, and he and I had a nice chat. His name is Nat Turner, and uh, very, 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 very nice guy. And he was very interested in, in the talk. Here I am receiving their club's banner. I need to send them one. All right, then we went to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. And this is a fairly new um, museum. And I'll just scroll through a whole bunch of things. This, the, again, these things just keep popping up out of the ground. S some they've dug out and some just show up. These are uh, uh, little statuettes of, of, of making bread. They had, a, they had a vertical plumb bob. Uh, these are the protective goddesses for, for uh oh, here we go. I'm sorry. The protective goddesses for their, their civilization. They had textiles, they, they had all kinds of fabrics and, come on, quit doing this, fabrics and, um, and they, they made all kinds of stuff. This is the chair from the tomb of the Queen Hetefres from 2500-ish BC, not bad. Uh, these are the death masks for, I guess, her and her husband, I'm not sure. These are coffins down here. Let me see, I think that's video, yeah. Yeah. These are things that were found in that tomb. Okay, uh, you can't see this this statue right here, but um, the sun god sun god is is getting purified with water uh, in, in the eastern horizon before shining before he's shining in heaven. All these things mean something, and a lot of that I, I didn't catch. Uh, cosmetics. Women uh, typically wore uh, uh, black and green eyeliners. They they use rouge quite a bit, and these were their these were mirrors, co cosmetic kits. Pretty advanced. They didn't have um, they didn't have wood, but they had papyrus, so they can make baskets out of out of papyrus. Um, this is from the. Uh, 19, 1800s, I believe. These were Torah cases. The Jewish community was, had a large, uh, large presence there for centuries and centuries. And these were Torah cases where the five books of the of the Pentateuch had been stored. Last day in Egypt, uh, Sally took me to the Grand Bazaar. Uh, but before that, before that, I went to her club meeting. This is a meeting of the Egypt of the Cairo Egypt Rotary Club. There were only about oh, eight or nine people there. Wonderful meal, um, got, got a banner of theirs and I've got to send him one of ours. And uh, then Sally took me to the Grand Bazaar and where they, where they have everything and if they don't have it, you don't need it. And that's Sally and me at, at the end of the day. Um, we did go by the, uh, the Cairo Marriott, and, and, and I mentioned that because, first of all, that's where Debbie and her husband uh, stayed, but uh, it was the former palace of the Sultan of the King. Pretty nice, pretty nice hotel. Egypt is now building a grand, a new, brand new, grand Egyptian museum out by, out by Giza. It'll be open in 2023, and you will be able to fly into Cairo, take the subway, and go right to your, you know, all, gonna, they're gonna have all the big hotels there. Uh, the, the Grand Museum, which is gonna have everything that's in storage from the current museum that they don't have room for, plus all the big shops. So that's gonna be the, the place to go in about a year and a half. And I think, oh, nope. There is more on the Grand, th this is, these are pictures of what the Grand Museum is is looking like now. These, the, the, these little things in here, these, some of these are cartouches, which identify the kings, but all these things 
means something. They all tell a story. And this is the death mask of uh, Tutankhamun that will be in the Grand Museum. And that is the end of the trip. How about that? Excellent. That's awesome. I'm going to turn it over to Lou because I think we have some questions in the chat box. Lou, you want to handle that? We do. We do. We have a couple of questions. Uh, so, Bob, why was the plane in Istanbul, the big Antonov, and does it fly in and out of there a lot? I don't know. Uh, it, fly, it flies all over the world. Uh, it picks up only, I've seen it on TV, and it, 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 the, the, whoever uses it, uses it for only large cargoes. I don't know why it was there. I just saw it and said, whoa, I know what that is. So I wish I had an answer. I don't know. Okay. And then another question is, how, how many miles a day did the riders ride on the cycles and scooters? We, we got up early. We got up around five o'clock. We'd have breakfast at 530. Uh, we'd be uh, on the road. We'd, we'd meet around six, have a daily briefing. They were, we, we were on the road by 630 every day. Some days it was short, only maybe three or four hours of riding. Some days it was five or six hours with, with a couple of stops for, for refueling breaks and, and, and for lunch. So some, once or twice we got to the next stop about one o'clock. Most of the time it was like two or three, but I would say between two and 400 miles a day. Well, that's quite a bit. That yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, um, it was 1300 miles in like nine days. So it varied quite a bit. And then uh, the last question I see is, are there or aren't there steps to the top of the pyramids? You can they don't want you climbing on it, but but, right. but there but but there's no way to stop people. You can get up to that first entrance. Uh, I'm not sure if, if I can find that or not. You can climb up to that first entrance. Here we go. Uh, you can see people up there. I don't think you can climb all the way to the top. Uh, I think you used to be able to do that, but now there is an entrance into the um, in, into the pyramid right there, and some people will will climb up. It is a climb. It's not an easy climb, but they they will they will shoo you off of there. Okay, I'll turn it back over to Mary. That's all the questions, Mary. Okay. Thank you, Lou. Bob, thanks. I love this presentation. Thank and you. I love that you. you shared this trip. I, I liked it when Amon was on here and talked about the um, Cross Egypt Challenge. So we're so happy that you actually did this and were able to share it from a personal standpoint. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you'll get requests to go show it to other clubs. So be prepared. Okay. Uh, coming up. Paul, you want to talk about the conference? Sure. We are in the midst of our planning, the All Club Conference, March 11th through the 13th, 2022. Going to be on Sunny Hilton Head. The conference registration is so close to being up on DACDB and ready. Um, I am just excited when that gets out there so everybody can register. Uh, the district membership will get an email saying the dates of the conference and the details so that you know that conference registration is open. But again, it's going to be at the Sinesta Resort on Hilton Head, March 11th through the 13th. Lots of fun, lots of speakers. You can register for your hotel right now if you'd like to. It's $179 a night. And the conference registration is forthcoming. Fabulous. Come join us. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure you'll have a lot of people take you up on that. We have coming up um, next week, we do not have C-Rap, it's Thanksgiving, so have a good Thanksgiving. The week after that, on the 29th, we have Bill and Ann Stevens with Daniel Island. They're going to talk to us about the book they published on their weekly antics. I think it's about them. And then in December, we have a guy talking about earthquakes and trains in South Carolina, and we have the silly, silly, ugly sweater trivia meeting and um, in January we've got uh, a guy that's going to talk to our girl that's going to talk to us about bitcoins and cryptocurrency and um, a good diet that you could use if you are in the middle of taking chemotherapy so should be pretty interesting there too 
Is there anything else anybody has to add? Want to talk about? Okay, then let's do the four way test and of the things we think, say and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? That's it. Thank you so much. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week. Art. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bob.